does it? The question is of huge importance, not merely to appraise Schumpeter, but because the prognosis affects ourselves as residents of the system about whose fate Schumpeter is writing. We begin with a dazzled sense of admiration mixed with irritation. Schumpeter cannot resist attitudinizing, whether he is tweaking the noses of good bourgeois conservatives or of Marxist zealots. He uses his book to air a great many pet ideas. Marx is a great conservative. Monopolies increase the sphere of influence of the better and decrease the sphere of influence of the inferior brains. The more completely capitalist a nation is, the less likely it is to be aggressive. A judgment that will interest students of 19th century British imperialism and 20th century American foreign policy. But these characteristic flourishes must be set in perspective by reflecting on the argument as a whole. Does not that argument have a certain ring of authority? Does not the prospect of an immense unexplored technological frontier of a drift toward bureaucratization in business as well as government, of a waning of the bourgeois ethic strike us as uncannily prescient. Remember now that the book was published in 1942. As a seer, Schumpeter is without equal in his time. At once putting to shame the heady expectations of the contemporary left who thought that capitalism was on the way out, the naive hopes of the contemporary middle who believed that a modest application of government spending would fix things up once and for all, and the black forebodings of the right who saw us headed down the road to serfdom. Nonetheless, the Schumpeterian prognosis is an uneven one less impressive on close examination than at first sight. There is no doubt that Schumpeter was right in foreseeing a wide open technological future, but he did not foresee that the quality of that technology, from nuclear arms and energy to computerization might pose considerable dangers for capitalism as well as fields for investment. There is no denying his prescience when he spoke of the impending growth of bureaucracy in big business. But it is by no means correct that the rise of lumbering giants would result in a decline in their aggressive behavior. The spectacle of vast multinationals contending for shares in world markets does not accord with Schumpeter's prediction of a dwindling capitalist drive for expansion. And is it really the case that a kind of ennui, a loss of belief, would overtake the capitalist world? If we were writing in the late 1960s, the prognosis would indeed seem far-sighted, for Western capitalism then seemed clearly moving toward a kind of planned economy. Thirty-odd years later, the prognosis is less convincing. Not just in the United States, but throughout Europe, we have witnessed a revival of belief in capitalism as the movement toward a more planned system produced first growth, then inflation, finally a loss of faith in the planning process itself, to which the collapse of the Soviet system provided the coup de grace. Sears' classical 
the of visions, the to power, such gave that logic, economic strict, the of expense, the at gained was insight, his of edge cutting, the yet, all, at not came it whom to marks, or easily too came success, worldly, whom to keens, then things of drift, the about judgment pass, to placed better bin have me, Shum Peter, enterprise and politics, real inexperiences, hard his stance, scholarly aloof, his taste aristocratic, his with blow would change cultural of winds the which from direction the about judgment a one social uh, as prognosis economic and much so not is his philosophers worldly other the of those as criteria same the quite by judge be cannot then vision his. Go, system, the how determined to themselves in sufficient not or economics of processes that the conclusion final triumphant shum Peters, not it is indeed. Pressures economic, not cultural, to bowing is candle. The worth, not is game. The that decides who businessman, the merchant, competitive, the or capitalist accumulating, the does as imperative same the obey, to said be cannot capitalism, shum Peters for outlook, the spoiling, in part a large so plays who intellectual, disaffected the theories. Formidable, there erect to Marx or Smith, enabled that assurance, though with predicted be cannot that matters political and social, about assertions, shrewd often of set, a rather is it. The implications of Schumpeter's thesis are disquieting not merely for capitalism, but for economies. Was not the great achievement of the worldly philosophy at first their ability to deduce the direction in which society was moving? Is not economics built on the capacity to predict in the large, if not in the small? And does not the Schumpeterian scenario mean that all that is now past, that whatever the predictive capability of economics, it no longer matters. We will turn back to this decisive question in our last chapter, but we are not quite finished with the chaotic figure of Schumpeter himself. There remains that last twist to his story. We shall see that it adds more than just an insight into Schumpeter's biography. Let us begin by reflecting again on the central contradiction in Schumpeter's depiction of capitalism. It lies in the juxtaposition we find in his theory of economic development, capitalism portrayed as a static, inert, changeless, circular flow, and as a system caught up in a dynamic of change, a dynamic that would later be called the gale of creative destruction. How could Schumpeter have allowed himself to depict the system in such inconsistent terms. 
What possible sense does it make to speak of a changeless circular flow as representing the quintessence of a system that could also be characterized as a continuous process of self-created transformation? We know Schumpeter's explanation. The circular flow allows us to appreciate the impact of entrepreneurship, not merely as the driving force within capitalism, but as the source of its unique flow of profit income. But there is another way of interpreting Schumpeter's odd juxtaposition. Schumpeter's entrepreneurs, let us recall, do not come from any particular class. They are simply the possessors of a talent for innovation. Capitalist development is not therefore intrinsic to capitalism as such. It is the dynamization of society at the hands of a non-capitalist elite. There is no doubt that Schumpeter himself was a believer in the importance of elites in history, minorities of individuals with unusual gifts. Let us read what he has to say about them in his theory of economic development, where he takes the case of musical ability. Caruso's the to finally come we it possess who people of number diminishing continually and ability singing increasing continually of series a through quarter this within and average the above measure uh, in quarter a uh, say a uh, slet and measure diminishing progressively uh, in quarter a degree average unto it for capacity the have group homogeneous ethnically unin individuals the half perhaps will he if sing can man healthy every that assume can we changing but people who are forever people of full always indeed are which hotels like our writes Schumpeter society of strata upper the leadership not but change may leaders they are there society of apex the at place rightful it's assumes it such as group special a constitutes leaders of echelon the thus there always is another or kind one of elite an of force feudal uh, in place it has talent military change will influence exercise to needed qualities the setting social different in society of mass inert the on elites of impact the of story society of mass inert the on elites of impact the of story the is development and change of narrative uh, as history so will and intellect of qualities super normal by characterized type uh, are who people elite true the reach we therefrom challenges daily of normal range the to themselves adapting of capable are but experience of ruts comfortable the on mainly rely who people business all practically find we here capacity innovating of amount normal of possessors the half next that comes then world business of the functionaries and clerks the life economic of aspects routine most the two consigned 
is it that quality this sin deficient so is Schumpeter says population the of quarter about leadership economic including leadership for the capacity with is it so singing ability with is it as Perhaps this is why Schumpeter is so philosophical about the advent of socialism. For who will run the managerial economy that he envisions as the end product of capitalism's decline? It will be the possessors of ability, of course, the bourgeoisie. Here is a class, he writes, which by virtue of the selective process of which it is the result, harbors human material of a supernormal quality, and hence it is a national asset which it is rational for any social organization to use. So is there no reason for the managerial class to fear socialism? The skills needed to direct a socialist system are sufficiently like those needed to run an advanced capitalist one that the bourgeois elite will find its natural position at the top. Is this economics? Not by any of the conventional conceptions. It is better described as historical sociology. It is not classes, but elites that sees the commanding heights. Economics describes the results in societies that reward skills exercised in the marketplace rather than on the battlefield or in the pulpit or in the managerial office, but be it one elite or another, it is always the Carusos who run the show. It boarded, have not, would he suspects one. Boat, Keynesian, the mist he, pricing at only, was he as looking but saw, keen saw what seen would he output total of path beyond focused, been had Keynes. Like eyes, marshals if makes what that vision makes, difference analytical, the of example, dramatic, more uh, ever there was. Other the and one producing between difference, the sea, not does he. Machines and shirts pricing between difference fundamental, no, is there right is martial perspective this from, moreover, growth future for production of sequences, the not priced are goods which by process the emphasizes economy, the of his vision because why, use practical, much not of perhaps in vague, distinction the calls martial but no corner, the around just in sight, crucial keen sea, can we for breath our hold we, output of types two, these between lies given, bin has prominence some which to distinction, uh, that notes he, one last knot remains in the string, we recall the young Schumpeter thrust into the milieu of an aristocratic school in Vienna, where he absorbed the values that were to become so important in his own life. Are we mistaken in seeing those values transferred to his own vision of history, in which an elite becomes the central moving force? Certainly, this elite is an aristocracy, embodying the belief in the natural superiority of the chosen few 
that lies at the core of all aristocratic views of society. But notice that the Schumpeterian few are chosen not by blood, but by intellect and will. It is thus an aristocracy of talent. This is the elite to which Schumpeter belongs. The drama of history, as Schumpeter envisions it, thereby justifies not only capitalism, but a group, Schumpeter's own group, as resting on something more durable and worthy than mere name or birth. Thus, there is a final congruence between personal experience and the historic vision that unravels many contradictions. Limitations, it's demonstrated he achievements, very his, and because but discipline the within accomplished, he what of because only not him with grips to come must economics in interested every one visionary or analyst as was certainly he that visionary great a be to aspired he whether no not do we inadequate were formulations his analysis last the in that felt he because was it that suggested as scholar one colleagues and students his from entreaties despite theories own his on lecture never would Schumpeter, that interesting is it clear not is him denied had life that wish the was that whether economist great a uh, be to aspired he it denied have likely he would neither but welcomed have would himself Schumpeter that assessment a not perhaps this is.